And this is going to be Lisa Yu. Let's give a round of applause for Lisa, everybody. All right. Who's excited to hear about the metaverse and what the future holds? Woo! Seems like everyone here, so let's dive right in. So what is the metaverse? The metaverse is a virtual space where people gather and interact in a digital environment. And it's grown into a social network of 3D virtual worlds focused on connection. And when you think about this new world, anything is possible. Creativity is limitless. If you can dream it, you can create it. So instead of focusing on what the metaverse is and what it's not, let's focus on talking about what the future can bring. I believe the metaverse will completely disrupt e-commerce. Currently today in the Web2 world, you go to a website, you scroll through endless grids of items and content, and you have to try to sift through all the data and all the inventory just to find something that you're interested in. So imagine you're looking for a shirt and you're scrolling through pages and pages um, only to find that they don't have your color or your size. So that can be a very cumbersome experience when you are having to log in, scroll through multiple pages, click on the shirt you want, then you have to add it to the cart, then you have to enter your credit card only to check out. And this takes a lot of time and there's a lot of steps in order to purchase an item. Tomorrow's e-commerce experience will be very different. When you log into the metaverse, it's already connected to your crypto wallet. So it already knows your identity. Um, it also knows who you are. Um, your avatar can be sized to your proportion. So when you're trying things on in the metaverse, um, let's say you're digital, window shopping, you see your friend Molly and you really like her dress. You can simply double click on her dress, see how it looks on your body, change the colors, change the patterns, see it in a different lighting, see if this dress, how it will look in the daytime, the nighttime, in different rooms, in different um, places. And you can quickly make your decision. You can swipe or click and buy instantly. So this creates a more um, natural shopping experience that's closer to walking into a store and trying things on. And this will reduce a lot of the friction of having something shipped to your door, trying it on, having it not fit, and having to go through the return process. And that can be very cumbersome. So I predict that the e-commerce experience in Web3 will be a lot more seamless and you'll be able to discover and buy seamlessly. I believe the metaverse will also disrupt entertainment. So in the past, we've had to sit through um, different plays or symphonies or operas, and there's only a limited amount of space in the theater. And then came the big screen. So the movie theaters came about and different networks were able to broadcast on the big screen, but you had to still go out and sit in a theater, limited seats, and then came the small screen. So then the television was introduced to our audiences, and you can now watch different types of shows. Um, you know, today it's whether it's Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max or Disney Plus. You have so many choices of content today, and now a lot of people just Netflix and chill at home. Um, in the future, the metaverse will create massive viewership across a global distributed network. So imagine how the audience has scaled from theaters to a global online audience in the metaverse. And this is really powerful, um, especially for content creators, filmmakers, and entertainers. Your audience 
is going to be so much bigger than the people who subscribe to a network, so much bigger than the people that can fit in the seats of a room. Um, it is basically the world is your audience. So um, really exciting times for entertainers and for those who are creating. I believe the metaverse will also completely disrupt the art world. How we discover, curate, and buy art is completely being disrupted. Today, art takes two major forms, physical art, paintings, sculptures, um, murals, etc. But now we've seen the rise of NFTs, which is what brings us here. Um, NFTs as digital art. But today, art feels an arm's distance. We observe art because we feel like we want to admire it from afar, um, whether it's hanging on a wall or a digital JPEG. We still look and gaze upon it as if the art is here and we are there. Tomorrow in the metaverse, we will have interactive art experiences where we and the art become one, where we can feel immersed in the art, we can play with the art, right? Um, in the metaverse, there will be motion picture art and experiences where you can guide your hand and you know watch a butterfly fly. You can immerse yourself, you can transform into a bird and fly through the sky in the eyes of flight. And you can fully immerse yourself in the world of the artist when they create this world where you can explore and play and dream and, and be free. So this is a major shift. And because a lot of these 3D artists are on the rise, um, so this is a very exciting time and a new art form. The interactive art, the three-dimensional art, really requires um, new skills and is creating a new market. So what is gonna be the medium in which we enjoy and experience the metaverse? Is it going to be your tiny phone? Is it going to be your desktop or laptop? Is it gonna be your television? Is it gonna be an interactive you know, touch screen or iPad? Um, I believe the metaverse will best be experienced through AR and VR. So I wanted to break down the difference between AR and VR. So VR is virtual reality and it is fully immersed, meaning when you put on the goggles, the outside world is completely blocked and all you see is through the portal of through the lens, the digital environment. So it's a fully digital environment that you're looking through. AR is augmented reality, which means it is a uh, blended reality of the real world and the digital world. So has anyone played Pokemon Go in the audience? Yes, yes, yep. So with Pokemon Go, the technology is that you're looking through the lens of your phone, you can still see the street or the backyard that you're running around in, but the, the digital elements, uh, the Pokemon, will pop up and be um, superimposed onto the, the world. So you're seeing a blended reality of the digital world and the real world. And so it really creates this sense of play where you can imagine what it would be like if, if the Pokemon was sitting right next to you or in, right in front of you. And so this creates a new experience. And what I've seen is that we're also seeing full immersive experience. So um, there are different VR, AR experiences where you can strap on a backpack and feel the vibrations and see the world. And it feels like you're in 
in a new environment or on a different planet or in battle, whatever it is, um, we're seeing the rise of both AR and VR gaming experiences. But there are also a lot of practical applications as well, um, especially in augmented reality. Imagine if you are an architect and you're trying to decide, you have a plot of land and you're trying to decide how many floors should this building be? You can actually see AR, VR, so you see the land, you can see the different stories, the different types of homes, and that's really valuable because you can see how it could look like in the digital environment before you build it. Um, same goes for like interior design. Let's say you have a house and you're trying to figure out, should I put this couch or this couch? How's it gonna fit? How's it gonna look? You can change and swap out different furniture in the 3D virtual environment and that will help you make a decision in what to buy and how to outfit your home. So those are all really exciting things as well. And I also predict that the metaverse glasses will become the new thing, right? We've had, we've gone from servers to desktop computers to um, a computer in your pocket What's next is a computer on your face. And through the metaverse glasses, you'll be able to fully immerse yourself in the experience of the metaverse. And what's really important would be the audio experience that comes with it, right? Because, I mean, have you ever watched a movie with no sound? It's not even fun. Um, also, having a wide field of view will be important so that you can truly see the world as it is. Brands have also been asking me, how do we get in the metaverse? How do we get involved? How do we participate? So the first thing I like to touch on is that it's all about community. You want to follow where your people are interested in. What are they interested in? Where do they hang out? And as brands, you want to be in the rooms where people are and understand your target demographic and provide a service or an experience for them in the metaverse. And, you know, have you ever watched an ad and you're like, I don't even, like the, the, it was just presented so well that it just made you want to like learn more and check it out. Um, it needs to be seamless in the background. It can't be like a banner ad or in your face. It has to really be, you're just hanging out you're in community with the people, you're creating experiences that they're excited about so that you are memorable and that um, your brands and your customers are loyal to, to you. So that's my recommendation. It's really focus on the community and bringing value to the people in the metaverse. I also predict that it is the online to offline experiences that will be really powerful. So for example, I gave a talk at South by Southwest and we talked about food in the metaverse, and it's, it was not about eating, it was all about commuting together, breaking bread together. It's the community, and that's where you bond. So an example would be, if you had a digital restaurant, um, you could also ship your audience an actual meal, or if you are a, a wine shop, you can send wine to your customers, and everyone together can have a unified dining experience and you know wine tasting experience, but they're participating in real life, but they're also experiencing with others in the metaverse. So that can be really fun. So those are some fun ideas for bringing online experiences offline. And really the goal is to create the most media impressions. The, the brands who are first to the metaverse will attract a larger target audience because you'll be seen as the leaders and the thought leaders in this space. So now that you've understood how the metaverse can disrupt entertainment, art, and also um, the AR, VR experience, and e-commerce, I want to leave you with a little bit of magic. 
Imagine what we can do together in the metaverse. Imagine you could have a dance party with a million people dancing to your favorite song. Imagine you can have families reuniting in the metaverse and friends who are from all around the world coming together, socializing. Imagine you are afraid of public speaking and you want to practice in front of an audience. You can do that in front of the metaverse before you have to get on stage. Imagine creating a song together or painting together in the metaverse and all the hands of the people that come into your room can participate and have a mass, you know, cooperative art project. And at the end of the day, it's all about connection. The metaverse is meant to be a digital experience. It's not meant to isolate people. It's supposed to bring people together. And so this is a, a call to all the creators that care about connection and authenticity. We need you. We need you to join in being creators and builders of the metaverse and to ensure that the core values of human connections are continuing on. And of course, if you can dream it, you can create it. I'm excited to dream with you, to create with you, and welcome to the metaverse.